uh, just a few announcements uh, before we officially start the Mass. Um, first item is pandemic protocols. Um, and it's a few reminders uh, from the Government of Ontario and the Archdiocese just to make sure to wear your mask while inside the church, covering from the nose to the chin. For communion, just a reminder that we have single file with social distancing. Sanitize your hands um, on your way up and keep your mask on until after you receive the host. Please refrain from singing. And there, no, there is no collection during the Mass, but you are invited to use the donation basket at each entrance. The Knights of Columbus will hold a virtual fraternal benefit night on Monday, April 5th from 7 to 7.30 via Zoom. Join to learn about insurance and financial resources available through the Knights of Columbus. And you can see more info in today's bulletin. The 2020 tax receipts are available for pickup at the back of the church. And please maintain social distancing as you pick them up. Uh, you can also call the parish office to have your receipt mailed out to you or to arrange for curbside pickup. Holy Week. Easter is coming and the schedule for Holy Week is out. And we will have the same mass times as in the previous years. Advanced registration is required for the celebrations on Good Friday, the Easter Vigil, and Easter Sunday. And that registration is taking place in person after the Mass is this weekend and next weekend. So, and thereafter, any spots that are available uh, will be available online, and you can see the posters at each entrance for more information. Siblings Keepers. To ensure the Mass is held safely, respecting COVID protocols, we are blessed with a wonderful crew of volunteers that we at St. Augustine call the Siblings Keepers. And should you want to help out and join the gang, just uh, talk to Dennis after the Mass or contact the parish office. So, good evening. The St. Augustine Parish welcomes you to the source and summit of Christian life, the most holy sacrifice of the Mass. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. Today's Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Anne Adams. Please stand for our opening hymn and to welcome our presider, Father Francis Scott. Lord, 
Jesus through your cross, death, and resurrection, you set us free. Lord, have mercy. Praise Jesus, you bring healing and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, through your word and sacrament, you strengthen us in holiness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That is the 
unchallenged friends of the grain of wheat, only by loving his love returned. Only by reaching out and trying do we learn and grow. Only by giving to others do we receive. Only by dying do we rise to new life. Now, are we ready, fully ready in our faith life right now? The dying to self is the real dying. If we can grasp that right now, nothing else should matter because the physical death is a quiet slipping away. Because the real dying is right now. These times, these opportunities during your lifetime, if we grasp that, nothing else should come in the way. We should not worry, as Teresa of Avila would remind us. Nothing should bother you. Nothing should, you know, challenge you. The gospel of the grain of wheat is Christ's assurance to us of the great things we can do and the powerful miracles we can work in letting go of our prejudices, fears and ambitions in order to imitate compassion and love of the crucified Jesus, servant redeemer. Now a little aside, of course, we're in this sugaring season. I was reminded of that as I took a trip up to near Lanark to get some maple syrup. In many parts of the northeastern United States and southeastern Canada, this is sugaring season. For six weeks, usually from late February through mid-April, maple trees are tapped for their sap. During this annual sap run, the frozen sap in the maple tree falls and begins to move and build up pressure within the tree. When the internal pressure reaches a certain point, sap will flow from any fresh wound in the tree. Farmers and producers collect the crystal clear sap, then boil it down in an evaporator over a blazing hot fire. Have you ever seen them? Nothing is added. Nothing. Only water is removed. The sap becomes more concentrated until it becomes maple syrup. I hope you get it. The best thing that ever happened to a stack of pancakes or French toast, yum yum, begins a crystal clear set that thaws the warmth of long-awaited spring. Here we are. The beauty of this evening, to come alive in the spirit in this whole pandemic time. God is watching over us. But like the grain of wheat in today's gospel, maple syrup is a parable. A parable as to what it means to love as God loves us. And letting our self-centeredness be boiled away, we can transform our lives in the grace and peace of God. Capture that. And leave this church with that. May we possess the faith of the grain of wheat, that we may die to ourselves in order to realize the fruit of God's harvest of justice and forgiveness. May we embrace the faith of the spring maple tree, that we may be willing to give of ourselves for the sake of others as Christ gave himself up for us, allowing ourselves to be transformed in the life and love of the Easter Christ. Today, friends, today's gospel is a pivotal moment, this pivot time in John's narrative. Jesus' words about the coming of his hour marks the end of John's book of signs, prefaces of the book of glory, passion, the death and resurrection of Jesus. The Passover is about to begin in a few days. 
many Jews, including some Greeks, have arrived in Jerusalem for the festival. It's all merging together. Meanwhile, Jesus' conflict with the Jewish establishment has reached the crisis stage, crisis point. So the events of Holy Week are now in motion. But Jesus accepts all this. He obediently accepts its fate and is prepared for the outcome. Just walk around the station of the cross. There is no looking back. It's that total obedience and focus. Just try that. Just walk around that. The cross is pointing around to death, the 12th station. That's where it all culminates. The glorification to a grain of wheat that is buried and dies in itself in order to produce new life. The seasons, they constantly turning around. The sacrifice and harvest of the grain of wheat are the fate of the glory of anyone who would be Jesus' disciple. So the voice heard from the sky expresses the unity of Jesus' purpose and God's will. Dying to self and allowing the Lord to fashion us, to heal us. Like the grain of wheat that dies, the grain of wheat is transformed into the finest of wheat for the breads of the Eucharist. Have you ever thought of that? The breads of the Eucharist and the wine that is used, it's only flour and water pressed down. Unleavened bread. Same with the grapes that are processed from the finest of grapes in California. Aha! Uh -huh. Makes this beautiful light musket wine for the mass. What a process of dying. Unless that grain of wheat stays as a grain, it remains a grain until it dies in the earth. Same with the fruit of the vine. I'd like to close with an amazing story from New Zealand. In an interesting analogy, the grain of wheat must die. Do you know in New Zealand there are more flightless birds than anywhere on earth? Flightless. They don't fly. Among them are the kiwi and the penguin. Scientists tell us that these birds had wings, but somehow they lost them. They had no use for them. They had no natural predators on those beautiful islands, and food was plentiful. Since there was no reason to fly, they didn't. But through neglect, they lost their wings. Compare them to the eaglet that somehow ended up in a chicken barnyard. An eagle. The eaglet was raised with the chickens, pecking at corn and strutting around the chicken coop. But one day, a mountain man passing by recognized the bird, now a fully grown eagle, and asked the farmer if he could work to rehabilitate it. The farmer said, go ahead, but it's useless. All that, e that eagle knows is picking corn like a chicken. But the mountaineer began weeks of rigorous training with the eagle, forcing it to run after him, so, so that it had use to use its wings. Many times the eagle fell out of the limbs of trees onto its head, but one day, finally, the mountaineer took the eagle to the top of the mountain and held it above his head on his wrist. Giving an upward thrust to his arm, he sent the eagle into the sky with a fly, fly. The eagle circled and wheeled upward, straining, till it soon took off in a majestic sweep and looked directly into the sun. It was gone. It had regained its nature. It was an eagle once more. 
Oh, let's all sing a verse of on eagle's wings. Raise us up on eagle's wings. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Some of Pontius Pilate was crucified and died and was buried, descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, Communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. So as we get closer to the great Paschal mystery that unfolds in Holy Week, that death and dying for that great love that Christ has shown, and that conviction we present these prayers to, to the Lord. For the Pope, Bishop, and Priests, May their reflection of Jesus' words lead us to action as we approach our Easter celebration. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all leaders in church ministries, may they strive to lead and guide us towards Easter. We pray. O Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of St. Augustine, the women, the men, and children, May the leaders in ministry help us all celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the world who struggle through each day working to solve all problems peacefully. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all seniors and their extended families, for those confined to long-term care facilities, and those living in seniors' homes. May they celebrate the season with renewed hope and love. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering any type of illness, disease, or affliction, especially for those whose names are in our parish bulletin. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they inherit their eternal reward in heaven. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us seek now St. Joseph's intercession. O St. Joseph, most holy patron of the Universal Church of Canada, be with us, your people, as we prayerfully journey together as the people of God during this whole year. Help us rediscover the richness and depth of our faith. Help our parish and school family grow together as a community of faith in which we share your love for one another. Grant us growth of faith as we strive to the Christian community our homes, our parish, our schools, and our world. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mystery of this wine and 
one, we come to in the divinity of Christ, who humble himself, share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, 
who left us as a pledge of his love. We offer what you bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with, with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make the church a sign of unity and an instrument of peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Marcel our Bishop, all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, and all the saints, with their brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours, now and forever. Amen. Knowing that intensity of prayer that Jesus had with the Father, so we're called in that as well as we ask the Father to forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress and anxiety, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, and on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity, in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now offer around us a sign of peace.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, lives and reigns forever and ever. Another story and parable, this whole rugged cross behind me. Some of you know that my dad made that. It's probably now 35 years ago in my first life here. I was here four years ago, or for four years, 35 plus years ago. But I remember taking these old barn boards, making this whole rugged cross, which I left here at the church at the time, but, you know, from those old wooden boards, crafted into such a powerful symbol. The Gospel of today, of course, had died of the wheat, and that, that was at my father's funeral. 2001, I chose that Gospel for his funeral. So the interconnection with all of that is always personal and meaningful. The Lord be with you. We bow our heads to pray for God's blessing, knowing how blessed we are this beautiful evening. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your minds and hearts in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.